Madonna, lovely to meet you. And you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to tell you a secret. I saw it a couple of days ago. I just wanted, why, why did you decide to make the film? Well, partially because I wanted to document um, what it was like to put together a show and my life on the road um, as a kind of sequel to Truth or Dare, mm. or I think it was called In Bed, In Bed with, with Madonna, Madonna yeah. which is a really naff title. It wasn't my idea. Um, uh, I wanted to, it was like, it was meant to be a bookend. So partially that was the reason, and, mm. and kind of to, to see, you know, me 12 years later, how my life had changed and, and how my point of views had changed. I mean, that was the original reason. Yeah, because watching it as a fan, you sort of, you see it, and because to start with, when I put it on, I thought, right, why, why am I seeing this? This is interesting, you know, I, I'm in, you know, and, and then you think, well, you know, like it or not, mm -hmm. you're the biggest pop star in the world the last 20 years. So your fans almost, is it almost like they need that update, they need that recap? Um, well, I can't speak for my fans and, and as far as what they need, but uh, I thought, like I said, my original idea was to, was to do a kind of a follow-up. But then while I was making it, it when we were editing it, uh, I, I decided that I didn't want to follow the formula of the first film, which focused mostly uh, on my, my life, you know, with the show. Mm. I wanted to incorporate a lot of other things, because obviously my life has evolved into a lot of other things. and. So um, it became, I started off wanting to tell one story, which is what I always say to people about this film, and I ended up telling several stories. Is it difficult to, um, to hand over control? Because you, you, know, you seem to be a person that likes control. You like uh -huh. to be in charge. And uh -huh. you know, obviously that's kind uh -huh. of why you're so there successful. There is that rumor about me. Yes, <laughs> floating around. But I mean, how do you find these people then to go, right, OK, I'm, I, I trust this person enough to, to let him make a movie, or trust this person enough well, to help me make a stage show or an album? Well, it's not like I, he just turned the camera on and he shot whatever he wanted and I wasn't involved in it, and he edited it and I wasn't involved in mm. it. And that way, it's not a typical documentary. I see it more av, uh, as a, um, a visualized journal. Mm. Um, what I like to do is hire or collaborate with people who have very strong opinions, who are incredibly visionary, very creative, um, and so you're like arguing people. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> believe me, Jonas and I argued a lot. Really? Yeah, but you need to work with strong people. I don't want a yes man yeah, or yeah. woman. Um, it's good to have people who have opinions because you need to be tested because it's the testing that makes you know whether you really believe in something or not. You could say I'm a control freak because I want things done just so, but on the other hand, I always want to work with people who have bring something to the picture and, and help me to see things in another way. And Jonas has a very specific point of view, and, and so do I. And they're not exactly the same, which is a good thing. I think the nicest thing, when I watched it, well, we'll get on to the kids and, and stuff later on, because um, they steal the show. They <laughs> the, do. Ni the nicest thing when I watched <laughs> it is, is you're very, you're, you seem quite vulnerable in it. And, and Don't I seem quite vulnerable now? No. No? No, you're not vulnerable. Oh, no. Right. no, you do, you do. But, Get to know me. But in, <laughs> I want to do that, actually. Um, but in the film, you seem like the New York show. You come off stage in New York show and you come back mm -hmm. and, and you're looking for your, your buddies and there's no one around. As you can see I have no friends. But it's almost like you need the validation mm -hmm. when you come up. And it's a, well, TV's a little bit like that as well, yeah. Well, it's very weird to do a show for 20,000 people and having everyone eating out of the palm of your hand and singing every word of your song and have this incredible synergy and exchange. Um, and then come back to a room with, with, where no one's there, and you're just sitting there by yourself, and the yeah, silence yeah. is deafening, yeah. and it's it's kind of too big of a contrast. You need to you need to go into a decompression chamber or something. Um, but also, you have to remember that when a camera's in a room with you all the time, you know it starts with you. It takes several months to feel comfortable with it. By the time we got to uh, um, New York, it's like the camera wasn't there. Absolutely. Except, of course, when I went to the bathroom. And then, it then wasn't I took offence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but you, you also seem to have, um, I guess, almost a maternal relationship with your dancers, which, was, which, which came across, which was, mm. uh, I thought, a lovely part of the film. Um, yeah. And yet, there must have been that, you know, you, know, you, you like you said, you woman likes to be in control, but it must have been that awful moment when you had to let them go at the very start, and, you know, and then you've... It's almost that X-factor moment, I hate to say it, but you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's horrible. I, the audition, that's why I say it in the film, it's a dog's life. The audition process is horrible. And the rejection that you feel over and over and over, every time you, you, you when you audition, whether it's a film or, or a, 
a part as a dancer or whatever, you have to make yourself vulnerable to complete strangers. You have to give them your all, and then you, you finish it, and you feel like a jerk, and you know, they like, there's silence afterwards, and they go, okay, thank you, we'll call you. And you just, it's just a horrible process, but obviously that, you know, makes you tougher. Sure. You've, Do you remember that like it was yesterday, all those auditions and stuff? Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember getting cut all the time. Yeah. How does that work? Well, you know what, I, I don't understand. Thank you, we'll call you. Well, I, this is what I don't understand, because presumably, when dancers go for an audition, there are no bad dancers. Because yeah, there are. Are there? Yeah. The bad dancers go for auditions? Oh, my God. Yeah, they especially come and audition for me. Really? <laughs> well, um, what, what you get is a lot of nutters. <laughs> um, <laughs> you get some unbelievable dancers, too, like the best. And I do feel very uh, lucky to attract, like, the best dancers. Mm -hmm. But I also get a lot of cuckoo people who like to dress up like me, you know, boys dressing like girls, girls dressing like boys, people who think they're me, people who look like they've just been released from a lunatic asylum. That, that must be terrifying. And people who get, they, and they're really bold too, they get right out in front and they don't even do the combination, they just do some other dance. Or, do you have like a witness protection thing where you just put a glass screen down? No, and I'm sitting at a table with Jamie and, and all the people I work with and that's very close contact. But I want, I, I don't want people making those decisions for me. Your dad was also in the movie, um, mm. which I really liked. Was that something you didn't plan? Because it seems that... No, my dad's in the other, in the, in the, in the first film. Sure. And I think my dad is obviously a big part of my life. And I think if you want to get, if you want to know me a little bit, you need to know my dad, um, who is a sort of obsessive, compulsive workaholic. Yeah. Um, and, uh... I think it explains my pathology a little bit. Do you know what I liked about <laughs> when your dad was there? Was when, firstly, you were saying a prayer, which he seemed to really love. Yes. And secondly, nice Catholic boy. Well, when there's, there's religious iconography up, uh -huh. on, uh, up on the stage and so yeah. forth. And he well, liked all that. He loved all that. Yeah. But it was, regardless of context, he was just up there going, yeah. he was like my dad. The minute there's anything religious, he's like, Jesus on the oh, well, Jesus up there, that's fantastic. Yeah. You say fun is overrated, <laughs> um, but. You look like you, li you like the fact you're enjoying yourself. I do, but everything I say is a contradiction to something else I said. Mm. It, that's life, isn't it? I mean, it's a paradox, right? Yes. I mean, fun is fun, but it's also overrated. And life, life isn't just about having fun. So do you and feel then, guilty about having fun? No, no. But there was a time where I probably, you know, put more emphasis on having fun and less emphasis on being a decent human being. Uh, I'd like to think I have a bit more of a balance going on in my life. Well, what comes across to me in the film, more than anything else, is that, is that there's a... You're still ambitious, but it, it isn't with a big A, as it were. You seem quite content. You, um, you seem... Um, really? Am I, getting, am I getting all this wrong? Because you seem... Don't get me wrong. You're I'm still, very ambitious still, still. still. Yeah, you're still pushing yourself, but, yeah. you know, you, there, are, there are things in your life that mean more now. Yeah, I, yeah. I have other priorities, if that's... Yeah. So that takes up, you know... You, I couldn't say that I'm an ambitious mother. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in that area of my life, I'm yeah. not ambitious. Yeah. But that, then that, obviously, you can only do so many things. So if yeah. you, you know, you're going to devote time to motherhood, it, it can't help but detract from time in your career. Right. So it's and all... that's also what, one of the things I tried to, um, to, to explore in the movie, the, the struggle of, of, you know, balancing my personal life, my, my life, with my family mm -hmm. and my life as an artist or, um, or an entertainer, and that I didn't have to deal with before no, when I made sure. the first film. And I, I thought that um, people could relate to that, because I know anybody who has a family and a full-time job is constantly being pulled um, from both sides. Yeah. I would just want to move on. Not interested in that. I am interested you in that. You will one day when uh, you have kids. Well, <laughs> well I was, was going to ask you about your marriage and stuff, because that's a, you know, for I see me... you have kids. Well, no, about your marriage and your <laughs> whole family and stuff. Cause okay. Guy, for me, um, your husband, seems to be the hero of the, of the film. Really? Yes. I thought I was the hero. You're the heroine. But, oh. uh, but Guy, no, what I like about Guy in the film is that he doesn't, he just seems to be the great leveller. Um, would you like to elaborate? Of your life, in terms of the wonderful but mad insanity that obviously it must be. But he doesn't really engage He doesn't really, care, doesn't really um, Obviously, he cares about you, but you're mm. the most important thing, and everything else kind of, you know, can zone out. And you know, yeah, like, he's not impressed. I think he's impressed, but but he's a guy. Yeah. So he doesn't show it. 
That's right? what comes Work across. Work with me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, no, but, you know, for example, when you said I'm a little bit nervous or something, he just says, fly, girl, go on. Yeah. No, he's, he's got a good sense of humour about the whole thing. He doesn't, you know... He takes it seriously, but not too seriously. He's not starstruck, if mm. that's what you mean. Mm. I, I don't you... think I could handle it if he was. When you saw him, did you immediately think, oh, yeah, he's my type? Yeah, I did. What is your type? I mean, it... Um, Put the funny, to one side. Funny. Right. Uh, opinionated. Oh, kind of macho. What does kind of macho mean? Well, not overtly macho. Who would like, know? Like, 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 push ups. Exactly. That kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how do you think marriage has, has, has changed you? Well, I'm, I'm a lot more tolerant than I used to be. I mean, before when people used to, you know, rub me the wrong way, piss me off, insult me, whatever, I'd just be like, bye bye. Yeah. <sighs> So, yeah, but, I mean, that's the whole thing with family, period. Kids and husband or wife, whatever. You do have to um, become a lot more unconditional about everything and tolerant of people not measuring up to your standards 24-7. For you, you don't seem to be a woman who likes compromise, so is it... What? It... You know, you've got, you've got me pigeonholed for, like, you know, just... Stick me in a box and call me a control freak. And you said you're a bit of a control freak. A bit, but I, 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 I you, you have to do some kind of compromise when you, when you, when you're married. Yeah. And when you have kids, that's the nature of the beast. You know. So what are the big shared interests? Because can he dance? No. Is he a terrible dancer? Um, kind of. Yeah. But he can do other things. Would good. he be one of the kind of mad stalkers that comes to the auditions? No. He's <laughs> no. not that. He's not terrible dancer Please. in that sense of the word. I don't think auditioning is in his repertoire. OK. This is and what about um, Irish songs? Because uh, he's... He likes Irish songs more than me. I hope you're not insulted. I slightly. Uh, well, I do. Uh, some of them are amazing. Can but you it's sing just me that one? You, no. Why I already... Not? I'm not doing that singing thing again. OK? I already made a fool of myself. Thanks. i would prepare one for you. People can... If they want to hear some Irish folk songs being sung, they can see my movie. Oh, that's harsh. Sorry. Or I can... T I can I... Do you want to s I see you're gagging to sing one for me. No. <laughs> no, you sure? I do, but only if you want me to. And I, I don't I think you want me to. I absolutely insist that you sing me an Irish folk song. Okay? This is... Yeah. Is this laced with anything? No. <laughs> this is a, a Belfast song. Okay. Not where I'm from. Is it political? No, it's not, actually. It's beautiful. Okay. And it's just a, it's a love song. I'll just sing you a, a very short verse of it. Her eyes, they shone like diamonds. Yes. What are you doing? What are you shaking your head for? Not that one. Do you know that one? Yes. The Black Velvet Band, it's beautiful. That guy sings that relentlessly. <laughs> I'm sorry. You'd rather I sang I something hope, else. I was hoping you were going to sing Danny Boy. That's my favourite Irish folk song. <clears throat> and when you come and all the flowers are dying And I am dead as dead I well may be You'll come and find the place where I am lying And you shall say an ave there for me And I shall hear your soft foot thread above me And o'er my grave you murmur sweet happy <laughs> And bending low I tell you that you love me and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. We've only got an hour left. Good. So you I, killed I, a whole bunch of time. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Halfway through a verse. This is actually quite a long verse. Um, uh, and I'm very impressed. You have a nice voice. I'm all right. I've got... There are, I, I think I've got about two notes, and I, I can't, I've got no range whatsoever. There was more than two notes you just sang. Do you think? Yeah. It's wonderful. Very good. But so, so do you still... Get, you, like, go to pubs with Guy and stuff? Uh, Does that yes. often happen, or is that an occasion? Not lately, because I've been working a lot, and I don't drink when I'm performing. That's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Because I imagine the one. I mean, the one. Which is why, in the, the scene in the film, you, you know, look like I'm you're in the gagging pub for and a I'm... drink. Yeah. Yeah, but I had shows to do, and if it's a night before a show, I don't like to be in smoke-filled environments, and I don't. No, I can't drink. Enough. So. But the thing is, though, I mean, and it's rare that I, I feel I've, I've worked a hard day. But when you've worked a hard day and you come home, there is nothing like you know what, I'm just going to have a drink before I go to bed. It's lovely. And nice you, glass of wine. And you still can't do that when you're on tour? Not, or? not the night before I sing. Really? Yeah. What? I mean, 
Do you Dri it dries, it dehydrates me. And is, is um, water, irrespective of what sort of water it is, is it always room temperature? Because like, yes. a couple of years ago, everyone was laughing at that, but now it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So. Sorry to get all excited. <laughs> yeah, about water. About water. <laughs> I want to talk about your kids because you, um, if Guy's the hero, then your kids for me steal the show. And there's a wonderful moment where you're telling jokes um, to your uh, producers and your guys, and it's going down quite well. And then it cuts. Not nearly as well as exactly. my daughter and my cuts son. To your daughter and yeah. your son. Your, your son is the perfect audience for any joke teller. Because, and he's got the most contagious laugh in the whole world. He is cracking. Do they get on that well all the time? No. Because there's about three no, years between them, isn't there? They're bashing each other's heads in. Yeah. They're, they go back and forth mm. from being incredibly affectionate, loving, and protective to, you know, committing something very close to you know, murder. Well, uh, the three years. The, each other's deaths. The three years between me, me and my sister. And it, so, were you that way with her? Well, yeah. But the thing is, when, when, when your sister is physically stronger than you, there is no, there's no worse feeling in the entire world. Yeah. And it, it looks but like But eventually, hell. boys outgrow the strength of their older sisters, don't they? And yeah, then, and physically, then, but not yeah. mentally. <laughs> yes, this is true. Wow. So, so they, they seem to get on very well, and he seems to like adore her and worship the ground uh, that she walks on. Ish. Yeah. He does look up to her. But as you, uh, well, there's one scene in the film where he won't let her get a word in edgewise. There's one moment when you're on the bed, and this is, this is for me, I just watched it and just thought, this just settles the whole nature nurture debate for me. Because there's one moment when you're on the bed with the two of them, uh -huh. and, uh, and Lourdes is, is uh, just, just talking to you, and he obviously is this kind of beautiful, demure, um, very mature, uh, probably speaking fluent French to you. Yeah. And he's bashing his head yes. on the bed like an yes. absolute maniac. Yes. And I just thought, you can't bring a kid up to do that. That's no. just what boys do. Exactly. Is that what you think? Yeah, I think that there are certain things, uh, character traits that girls have that boys don't have and vice versa. Mm -hmm. That it's not got anything to do with. I've never talked about guns to my son. He doesn't watch TV. I don't know, you know, where he got it. But, you know, as soon as you give them a stick, they turn it into a weapon, and, you know. <laughs> Well, your, girls don't do those that sort of things. No. They, you give them a stick and they try to put a dress on it. So. <laughs> but you, um, like you said, you don't, watch, you don't let them watch television at all. No. Nope. One movie a week. Yeah. Lots of reading. Yeah. And they go, do they go on the internet or is that allowed? They play um, computer games. They're allowed to play computer games. Yeah. That comes across to me like quite a strict mother. Ah, oh, not really. They do lots of no other things. No TV at they all. They go skating. And they go bowling, and they. Um, I'm not saying they don't have fun, but like. They have tons of fun. I'm sure they do, but like, TV well, was the holy grail when I was a kid. And if your mum says you can't watch TV, it just makes you want to watch it even even more. Are you worried if, that they that they they will rebel when they do rebel, or will you just get out a couple of the old? You I know? Don't, if they want to rebel, that's okay. It's good to rebel. It's good to be rebellious. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to go through your rebellious phase. But I wasn't raised with TV, and that didn't hurt me. And I still don't like it. I'm not interested in it. Mm -hmm. So, a, a, a friend of mine, um, just actually when I was going to meet you, said you must ask her this because, and, and are you obviously every mother worries about her children? Uh -huh. Do you worry about what they grow up in in terms of the glare of the spotlight? And it's not like you know you, you caught that at all. Um, but for example, when you went to the Harry Potter premiere, which is what my friend was talking yeah. about. Yeah. People are asking your daughter more questions than they're asking you almost. You know I was me? very happy about that because she's the Harry Potter aficionado, not yeah. me. And I brought her there. It was a special treat for her. She didn't even know she was going. Oh my god! So just said, you know, get get you know get dressed up and we're going out. And it was a, a special Absolutely. occasion. But in terms so, of what's normality, we don't usually do things like that. That's a very special thing. And you know, they're sort of they're not very fond of photographers following them around. Sure. But when they turn when they turn up to someone like that, a premiere. Like, well, it, it's, it's so exciting. And, yeah, yeah. Well, I, she was. She, I don't think she really cared about the photographers. All she could care about was seeing Hermione in person, and um, and uh, the other one, uh, Ron Beasley, the redhead. Yeah. Yeah. She's obsessed. She doesn't like Harry Potter himself. She does, but she's particularly taken with those two. And in the middle of the movie, she had to go to the bathroom, um, and when she went into the bathroom. Uh, Hermione was in there washing her hands, oh my God. and her jaw hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Do I do um, and I, I'm banking it's probably her, have any musical talent? Musical talent? Yeah. Absolutely. They, They're sorts? both very musical, but her definitely. I could see him being a drummer. S he's very rhythmic. 
Yeah. He's kind of in break dancing. Anything he can bash, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> break, he breaks he things and then he dances. Bash. Um, yes, Lola's very musical. Sings quite well. Incredible ball ballerina. Is she? Yeah. And because um, when I have children, I intend to um, force them to do things. Uh, piano, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Piano, really. Because I tried to get my daughter to do piano. She was not having it. Look at my Shrek-like fingers. How did I not get into piano? Look at them. Look at the spread there. That's a piano kind of stubby. hand, isn't it? They are kind of stubby, yeah. I'm a terrible typist. But do you I, have any um, hobbies? No, well, I have hobbies, but I don't... Do you play a musical instrument? No, and I really wish I'd... I can't play guitar with these chubby old stumps, can I? Well, I have stumpy fingers and I play you guitar. Look at your fingers, are lovely. What are you talking about? They, they're, they're gross. They're not stubby. No, they're... I'm not, they're not showing they're you. They're not gross. These well, are gross fingers. That one's gross. That one in particular. Why? What's the matter with that? That one's deformed. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened there. A ball hit me on. You're so horrible. <laughs> but it's true. It is deformed. A ball hit me uh, when I was playing. You used to play American football over here, weirdly. God forbid. I know. And uh, a ball hit me on the thing, and it, and it just came up there, and I was about 15. And then, oh. God, I can't believe it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to keep that with me <laughs> to my dying day. Madonna called my finger gross and deformed. Scarred for life. Well, that's just perfect. Sorry. Time goes back. So I know you don't want to talk about Kabbalah, and I don't I particularly want to talk I didn't about say I didn't want to talk about it. You rolled your eyes, so I thought, oh, I better get through this quite quickly. No, it's okay. I'm cool with it. Let's just say I'm an alien and I come down from space. Just explain to me... Well, just... you'd be a Scientologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, why did Please, I say that? Please, go and explain <laughs> Scientology to me, because we'll be here all day. But, um, I don't know anything about it. That's the thing. I just know that they believe that we were all once aliens. Yeah. Yeah. So don't explain that to me. But I don't know anything about just it. Just explain Kabbalah to me, please. Just very, very briefly in the, the broad strokes of it. Because it broad seems to strokes. be broad strokes. Well, no, I mean, you could explain it on lots of different levels. You could talk about it in a practical sense, or you could talk about it in a deeply uh, cerebral, analytical context. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways to, to say it. It's, it's a belief system, or it's a philosophy. Um, and it's several thousand years old. A lot of people confuse it with Judaism because there are a lot of rituals involved with the study of Kabbalah that are similar to Judaism, which mm. is, one is studying the Torah, for instance. But the difference is, is that in, from a strictly religious point of view, um, if you read the Torah, you, you just read it literally. You know, Adam uh, and Eve in the Garden of Eden, yeah. there's an apple, there's a snake, you know the old story. Mm -hmm. um, but all the stories in, from a Kabbalistic point of view in the Old Testament are are metaphors and there's a mystical interpretation of it so if you study Kabbalah you study a text called the Zohar I mean uh, it's not it's not a religion it's not uh, it's not you know a group that excludes other religious thinking so, so you could be Catholic and Kabbalah sure. well I am yeah. I mean essentially I was raised a Catholic and um, I still go to church every once in a while and I feel quite comfortable there but for me um, it's much more intellectual, and, and it, it deals w much more with science and um, the whole theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a thinking person reads the book, reads the story about Adam and Eve and goes, oh, come on, that's not really how the world was created mm -hmm. in seven days. And, uh, you know, um, what about, you know, Cro-Magnon and sure. Neanderthals and, and all of that? So it allows you to bring those two worlds together, the world of spirituality and the world of science, and they can live without conflicting with one another together. And was it important in, in, the, in the film to get a little bit of it across? Yeah, obviously it's influenced me yeah. um, a lot. And if I left it out, then that really wouldn't be a documentary about my life, would it? So, and I do think there are some very simple basic concepts um, that I think anybody could relate to, whether you believed in God or not. Sure. I, I think that I, I made the record as a kind of antidote to the seriousness of making my film, if you want to know the truth. Mm. And also, I haven't really focused on dance music for a long time, so it was a combination of yearning for that simplicity and yearning for a bit of levity and joy. And It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. That's it is. I saw you live a couple of days ago. It's a fun show. And yeah, it's, just, you know. it's fun music. It's fun to perform, um, and you know you don't have to take it too seriously, and it's liberating for me. So I like. I like it reminds me of flash dance. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. You like that? Oh, that's a good thing. She's a maniac. <laughs> that's always a good thing. Um, <laughs> do you still go clubbing? Um, do you well, I have go? parties, and I dance ferociously. <laughs> Is that the same After thing? several cocktails, does that qualify? I think it does. But are these go, to go out? Well, to go out to a club now is slightly that, problematic. So what I do is I have my own clubs. 
<laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, just invite all your friends, mm -hmm. hire a DJ, um, drink copious amounts of alcohol, and Brilliant. dance till, you know, dawn. And I read a little bit about ABBA. I mean, how difficult was it to get the permission for that? Because that's the first time, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, they, they gave a sample once to Lauren Hill from the Fugees, right. I think. Um, so it's the second time. They don't do it very often. I imagine they're asked all the time because they Not wrote so many great hooks. So, yeah, it was hard. Lots of begging, lots of cash. <laughs> when, in, when in doubt, I'm turning up in the brown envelope at five o'clock. Bjorn. Who, who do you rate now? Is there anyone you listen to now and you just go, yeah, they really got it? I love Coldplay, uh, White Stripes, Gold Frap. Those are the records I, I've been listening to cool. lately. Okay. Is that good? That's very good, good choices. Do you play those songs on your radio I, station? Cold, I play Coldplay. Mm -hmm. uh, golf rap I love. Terrifies me as well, but I absolutely love it. Terrifies She's you. good. She's brilliant. She, she's, you know, she's in your mold. She asks questions. She, she does that. Does that she? mean I terrify you? Oh, a little bit. But oh, in a, shut up. But no, but in a good way. <laughs> you pose questions. It's good to be posed questions. Yeah. Um, listen, I saw you on stage the other night. Uh -huh. And um, it's a very physical show. Yes. And it's, and it's brilliant. Um, how in God's name do you keep your figure? My figure? I don't want to flatter you too much. Okay, maybe, please, please but, don't. But how do you do it? Because um, it can't just be yoga. You mean what do I do for exercise? Yeah. No, I haven't done yoga since I fell off my horse. Well, not my horse, a horse. It's not your horse anymore? No, it wasn't my horse to begin with. I thought it was your my birthday horse wouldn't horse. Have, No. No, my birthday present horse didn't throw me. Okay. This other horse I was forced to get on did. What was his That's name? That's another story. Rocky. The horse's okay. name you fell off was Rocky. Yeah. Well, that'd do it, wouldn't exactly. it? Exactly. I should have known from the name. And what was it? A big stallion or something? No, it was a tiny little polo pony. It's revolting. <laughs> I know. And what, he just started like bolting the minute you got on it or something? Yeah. I don't want to go there. I get flashbacks. Seriously. I'm just starting to feel better, so. Okay, I'm sorry. Um so yoga, well, I used to do a lot of yoga, but I haven't done it because I can't, I mean, my shoulder's still a bit stiff. Mm -hmm. It's not that exciting, really. I, it's not I, exciting, well, but you've got I do Pilates. You got, isn't that yoga? Pilates? Yeah. Look, really you're looking fun. at a guy, I can't touch my toes. You're looking at a guy, I've got no well, flexibility can, Go whatsoever. on, let me see. Don't, because I've got, I've got a dicky back as well. Uh -huh. Dicky back. I don't like the idea of, like, the laces showing. Uh -huh. See, that's killing me. Yeah, but all guys are stiff. I know, but I don't want to be stiff. Oh, put your head down. No, I'm in it. Oh, yeah. Ah, what are you doing? <laughs> Madonna. Um, but you must like the fact that you look great. Um, I, right. I'm not going there. Right, I mean, no, no, no. Let's, let me, let me justify I, this. I'm happy that I'm not a fat slob, if that's what you're Yeah, asking. but let me justify it. I but I worked hard for it. Exactly. So how do you work? What do you do? Do you go into the gym? Do you go running? No, not too do you much. chase really. Rocky the horse? I, I walk uphill on a treadmill and I do Pilates. That's really the mainstay of my, my workout right now. And how many times a day or how many times a week like, do you have to do that? Every day of the week I do something. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just want to... But the weird thing is I don't work out half as much as I used to. I used to be, like, just a freak. You eat well, though, right? I do, yeah. But you still eat meat. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes. You try not to eat that much meat? I just don't really I wanna think know your, about I want to know your diet. Tell me your diet. Uh, f a lot of fish and vegetables and rice. Oily fish? Yeah. Mackerel? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love mackerel. Cod, salmon. Do and people want to hear this? I mean... I want to know because okay. I'm interested in fishing and... Um, Do you go fishing? Oh, yeah. Fishing for compliments? <laughs> sometimes. Uh -huh. Anywhere I can. Uh, do you go fishing? Um... No, to truth be told, well, this last summer a guy tried to get me to go fly fishing a few times, but I was too busy riding my horse, and it's really, it's, who oh, wants it's to go? Fly fishing boring. Go sea fishing. It's a lovely day. See, no, I've been sea fishing. That, I find that boring. What are you talking about? It's lovely. You're it's out just, in the ocean. It's just you get sun and relaxing. you get drunk. <laughs> no, you don't have to get drunk. What's the problem? Um, it's a bit, a bit boring, sea fishing. Oh, I like oh. things that require a bit more skill. You just dangle your know, thing in the it's water. It's very lucky. I understand that. And then it's all It's about okay. Fishing, it's yeah. okay. Rocco looks like he enjoyed it. Yeah, he loved fishing. to go fishing. Now, listen, I, I, I know the tour's called Reinvention, right? Yep. So, the whole reinvention thing. I, I, I'm obsessed with how you decide how you're going to reinvent. Do you know what I mean? So, for example, 
frozen, right? Mm. I'm going to get all black and the birds are going to come out and stuff like that. You know, confession of a dance floor, leotard. I mean, does someone come out and I go... Fi I find a muse. I go, I'm going to no. go cavewoman today. And you go, no. No. No, I find a muse. When I made my record, before I shot the video, I decided that Saturday Night Fever and John Travolta were my muse. Mm -hmm. So I just... That's the starting point. And then from there, I spin out. So um, every time I do something, I find, uh, like, with my music album, I decided the whole country and western thing. Yeah. The cowboy was my muse. And I try to um, deconstruct it in, in a postmodernist sort of way. But do you then wake <laughs> up and go, Knights of Armour are now my muse? And then you'll be halfway down the Knights of Armour tip and go, Oh, no, Knights of Armour aren't working. No, I have to see something. Something has to catch my... I have to go and see a film or an art exhibit, or hear some music, yeah. or see a fashion show. It's always one little thing that catches my eye, and, and then I go, oh my God, I see it all there. It's, that's it. Is that the trick, do you think, to look to le uh, longevity, success, and, and, and so forth? It to is. what? Pay attention? Well, well, no, to back the winner. To just think, yeah, I think that cowboy thing's going to work, and I think I can do something. But how would I know that that's a winner? No, you just, no, you have to just find something, and, and you have to believe in it. You have to go for it. It's, in, it's partially instinct, and it's partially confidence but you must look back sometimes and go what was I thinking no well I do that do you? sure what's the one what's the one I'm not telling thing? why not because a... that's I'm not telling why because I don't want to give all my cards away it, well, let's uh, talk about the go on the what, positive side of that what's, what's the second from the uh, worst moment no um this interview <laughs> what's your um, you cow what's the um <laughs> all right when you look back and You've had such a sort of varied and... and, and, and Checkered career. I was going to say checkered, and then I realised, <laughs> hang on a second, that's not right. Well, you've, had, you've had such a, a remarkable career and such a sustained career. Do, uh -huh. you, do you look back or, or do you, is it always constantly looking forward? I do both. I don't look back too much. I don't like to look back too much. So um, when you get an award or something, does it go straight in a, in a cupboard or...? Yeah. You don't like to contemplate and so forth? What, what are you looking at me like that for? Contemplating an award. Well, you get an award, or you, or you, you know, you go platinum or whatever, and, and you get your disc, and you get, you, you know... Oh, you... we have a moment of feeling proud and, yeah. and grateful and, you know, but it's not, it's not, at the end of the day, it's, it's not really the, it's not t uh, tangible objects that, that make you, that fill you up. It's um, more intangible things. Have you always been like that, or do you think you've matured into that? I don't think I've ever displayed one of my awards on a mantle or, you know, shown it to anybody. No, but inside your head, in, inside your head, is in what makes you happy now is, is the same thing that makes you happy now, the same thing that made you happy 20 years ago. Yes and no. What's that for an answer? It's, it's um, I mean, the most amazing thing is to go out on stage and put on a show and feel the energy of a, you know, sports arena or a stadium and, and know that you're connecting to people. I remember the first time I ever walked out on stage, it, on, on a big proper tour and you know I felt lifted up off of my feet mm. and I still get that feeling when I go on stage and so that still turns me on. I want to know about um, how you find it over here now. Find it over here. Yeah, how do you like it over here? I love it. I love it. What do you I, love about living here? I don't here? like the idea, I, I like to li leave for short increments but I love living here. What do you love about it? Um, I love I love the pace. Which is? It's somewhere, it's not as quite as insane as New York, um, but it's still, it's got energy. Mm -hmm. um, I love the dry sense of humor that is rampant in this town, yeah. in this country. I think it's brilliant. Um, I like the weather. I do. I like grey and rainy, and actually it's not been grey and rainy enough. Seasons. I'm kind of complaining about that. Do you like seasons? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what's great over here. I love the countryside. The countryside's amazing here. Because you have, obviously, a place in Wiltshire, right? Yeah, it's right on the border of Wiltshire and, and um, Dorset. Do you like the combination of the, of the both? L l living yes, in town I and love being living in town and then having that weekend getaway thing, whatever. And, and you know, I, I think very much like the, the British people very much see you as, as kind of one of us now. Do they? Yeah. Well, that's nice. Um, I'm chuffed, as they say in your country. <laughs> it's my country now. Well, this is the thing. I, I think, if someone told me I was interviewing you five years ago, I'd probably be 
not that you're not a, 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 an easy interview because you know you're, you're tough but I think five years ago I'd probably be more nervous mm. than I am now and obviously I've never met you before but well maybe I understand Britishness better Maybe that's it. Yeah, I think that's Appreciate right. the nuances. I that think you it speak. probably is. And, and you, you still really enjoy the country life. You don't shoot anymore, do you? No, no, but I've replaced that, replaced that with writing and see what's happened to me. You should have stuck to shooting. No, I'm glad you don't shoot anymore. Yeah. Because. Are you one of those anti shooter no, people? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> but you're. I like to shoot clay visions. Yeah, but there's something. For, I, and I've got, you know, I, when a guy goes out with a shotgun and kills his dinner, I understand that. That's totally. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, you know, I just read the little bit about where you gave up shooting and you just said the that. The blood just, thing. Yeah. And yeah. It's kind of like that when I, I go got fishing, a little bit but. too, yeah, a little bit. I became obsessed with how many birds I could not cut out of the sky. It did was, you eat any of them? Though? Yeah. Oh, I did. That's okay. No, I like pheasant. And have you got a cellar and a larder that you would hang them in? Yeah. Oh, how long should you hang a pheasant for? Um, till it's really rank. Really? Yeah. And so, like, the maggots Several and stuff? Days. Oh, <laughs> shut up. Do you think it's easier to be um, uh, famous um, in England than it is in America? No. <laughs> Just um, in terms of what I mean I is in You know what? I don't really know. I mean, it's, it's, it's six of one half dozen of the other. I mean, the press, the tabloid, there's way more tabloids here, it seems, and so it's like the the manifestation of the paparazzi seem there just seems like there's a lot more media here mm -hmm. and it's a smaller country so it's more intense but on the other hand i can go out for a walk here and be left alone and i can't in new york what do you make of you know for someone that's that's kind of survived at the top of a game for you know for a, a long while now what do you make of this whole celebrity culture we have and and this kind of fame for fame's sake mm. I think it's just a phase everybody's going through. It's not, it's not a good, very good thing to, to aim for. I just want to be famous. Mm. I mean, it's good to be famous for actually doing something or, you know, creating something. I think uh, if you want to stick around, your, you know, your best bet is to um, get good at something. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And I, I you know, I, we do live in a celebrity mad culture for sure, and I don't think it's doing anybody any good. Do you think it, it's got worse since you started? Yeah, and I think it'll probably get even worse. Yeah. Will it get better? I don't think it it's always going to get better. Do you think? It's always darkest before the dawn. Don't say it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And, and lastly, um, where do you go next? What do you want to do? Um, go to the bar next door and have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Care to join with me? me or, or, of course. Or, or on your own? One for my baby. Yeah, on my own, yeah. I love sitting in a bar by myself. <laughs> it's my favourite thing to do. I can Nanny say no mates. You, the um, what do you want to do? Or do you, are you not even thinking about Next. Um, well, there's a rumour that I'm going to go on tour. I haven't validated that rumour yet. but Can you validate it with me right here, right now? I'm thinking about it. You can't validate it. I, I'm thinking about it. That's all I can say. Yeah. Um, what else do I want to do? What about in a few years' no, time? Because, I mean, tour is a, touring is a, a very difficult, physical, yeah. um, hard job to do. I, I would love to direct a film. Wow. Tell me a bit about that. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I, I felt very inspired by making this movie. Um, and I learned a lot about filmmaking and storytelling and... I would like to do it on my own next time. Mm -hmm. Not about me. Fiction, like a Not necessarily fiction. fiction. Truth is stranger than fiction. So, and there's a sound bite for you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I like true stories, actually. I prefer them. Okay. But uh, I, I would like to do that next. Brilliant. Hmm. Um, I've really enjoyed meeting you. Have you? Yeah. Not just saying that? I'm not just saying it, no. Okay. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Oh, okay. I'd just go, thank you very much. <laughs> for nice to meet you. But I, I really enjoyed and having a chat with you, and thank you very much for giving me an hour of your My time. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. <laughs> Both cheeks. I'm a Brit now. Get dramatically lost with Channel 4, Wednesday at 10. Coming next tonight, the creators of South Park have invented a new sport with lots of rude rules. Basketball, our late-night movie, is on the way.